Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the whole world. Um, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, have an open discussion, or maybe workshop, or maybe tutorial, or maybe just a lecture. Uh, we don't know till the time when we met five, six years ago and discussed together that, oh, we are dealing with the same problems but you are dealing in Portugal and we are dealing in the Czech Republic. Uh, I hope you will enjoy the talk, 10 minutes, 10 minutes or something like that. Of course that we will not cut the lunch time, so we will end at 12.35. Uh, we are sorry because we are specialized in, or specializing in the audio. There is no a video or the pictures. So it will be only about the audio, so about the talks between us or between you because we want to improve, we want to um, have you also our both because it's about the feedback, it's about the critique, it's about the giving us uh, the maybe better direction than we've got. And uh, the first thing is that if anybody here, of course, that the Czech colleagues will not answer, um, knows at least the town, where is the National Sound Archive? You know, we know where is the National Film Archive. So where is the National Sound Archive? Anybody wants to be the first who wants to win the prize? Just raise the hand. Oh. 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 <laughs> you were cheating. <laughs> yeah, there is no National Sound Archive in the Czech Republic and there was no National Sound Archive in last 120 years of tries of a different people, different institution to build something like a phonogram archive in Vienna or in, uh, in Berlin or a British library or an institution who will deal about uh, these things, so about preserving audio carriers, sound documents from the cylinders through the 78s, to the tapes and to the born digital. So um, when, I, when I jumped into this uh, topic or uh, into this, yeah, into this topic uh, in 2011, it was uh, the same question what I already asked, like, okay, where is the National Sound Archive? Who's dealing with these things? Of course, you can say, oh, there is a Czech radio. Of course that they got the audio. But we are talking about the authority, which will be, let's say, like a Library of Congress. Okay, we've got the authority so we can look for the standards, for recommendations, for a sound lab, and uh, be inspired. But uh, when I ask this, I have to ask and look abroad. You know, I have to cross the borders and to see around the Czech Republic who's doing what and, and how and where. So my last 10 years, oh no, it's 12 years, and last eight years, I'm dealing with the, from the bottom, in the National Museum, uh, building, let's say, a sound lab or sound laboratory, or at, at least we can call a methodology center, which is dealing with the big collections of the National Museum audio carriers, but also helping to reach the rare and unique collections around the Czech Republic, but also help to preserve the content important for Bohemians or Czechs, not only in the Czech Republic. As you know, in the United States, there were a big um, uh, population or community or ethnic group, the Bohemians, that mean Czechs under the Austrian-Hungary Empire 100 years, 120 years ago. So we are dealing with all these things, but very important is that still will be very good to have an institution as an authority which will do these things for the nation, for, for the country, and preserve with 
and a big support um, like the others uh, around us. And um, when we met with, with Pedro, it was like, hey, Pedro, we are doing these things. Of course, that, that we presented many times at the YASA and the ARSC and the YAML, like a parts, like a topics. Yes, uh, who, who went uh, with us yesterday evening, I showed them the, the, the oldest advert on the glass by Brunswick Company, and it's across the street in Palas Adria. It's from the 26th, and it's still there. So the, we call them music sellers. Yeah, thank God that, that, that nobody is there making, you know, whatever, Starbucks or something like that. But uh, this is exactly uh, what is also important that, yes, we have to preserve, we are doing, but we have to also make a stories and, and sell the product to the others. Doesn't matter if it's a government or your boss or, or the end users or the visitors or listeners. So that's a part of our work is also doing the research in the Czech Republic, in Europe and in the United States. Uh, so, uh, as we said, doesn't matter if we if we uh, uh, named or called that I'm coming from the top to the bottom, and at the bottom from the from the bottom to the top, and you are coming from the top to the bottom, or from the left to the right, or right to the left. But uh, as you will hear, we've got the same problems, but from the opposite side. So I think that. We don't want to cut the lunch, so it's the, 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 the floor is yours, or the microphone at least. Thank you. Yeah, th this is a question of politics, politics and strategy. Uh, because, of course, we, in both countries, uh, you get, you know, all the preservation politics for paper documents, of course, it's necessary for any state. Uh, uh, photography, because of its connections with, with, with art world, galleries, museums, uh, eventually uh, film archives. Uh, in my country, for instance, the, the, cinema, the Cinematheque uh, was created officially uh, in the um, late 40s, early 50s, but started to operate in the 60s uh, and is still running. Uh, and, uh, but we don't have a sound archive. First, because People would say in the, in, in the 40s, oh, uh, there is this national radio. But as you people from the audio uh, knows quite well, that a broadcast archive is totally different approach from an archive, not only for uh, reasons of authority, but for instance, like legal deposit. Uh, this is another important question. And again, in my country, we have a law uh, that regulates legal deposits. It's, it's a rarity. I'm not sure, but I guess that 20 or 30 countries have a similar law for sound documents. But we don't have a structure to implement the law. So the law uh, obliges the country to provide access, universal and free access, to any published sound document. But if you reach out to the National Library, or a national archive, you ask for the documents and they say, oh, we don't have a playback system. We don't know where the documents are. We don't know how to describe them. So this is the, the, the context. The decision, uh, when we met in 2018, um, well, s around 90s, our, we, we did some lobbying in my country, uh, stating that, okay, we are the only European country without the sound archive. Of course, lobbying, you know, has to have this, you know, spiciness in the story. Uh, then, in 2018, I met Philip, and we came to the conclusion that we are in the same boat. Uh, and what I thought that was quite gratifying is that we got two different approaches. Uh, you know, not, uh, not in an X, Y, <laughs> coordinates, but uh, we start from opposite directions. Philip uh, started, you know, getting the, 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 the wax cylinders, the, the shellacs, 
uh, and start digitizing, creating stories about it, creating awareness about it. In my case, uh, knowing that working in, in, in such a strategy, because I saw it at academia, we were exposed to cycles of financing, budgetary cycles, each three years for European standards. Three, in each three years, we are cut down and people are unemployed, the knowledge is not transferred and the equipment is lost in the shelves of, a, of a, an institution. So this is what happened. Uh, so I decided to go the opposite side. Let's create uh, legally a structure. That's where we are. We are creating all the materials needed, a, a full report from, you know, kind of shelves to the square meters that the deposit should have, the temperatures or the, the, the metadata structure, what is our mission, what is our object, everything is established. Um, we already uh, draft uh, a law to create, to, to regulate the functioning of the institution. Uh, and um, now we are, we are waiting and we are preparing ourselves to, to start the building of the proper building. It will be a proposed built archive. Uh, and I guess that uh, in 2026, we can welcome you all in my country at the National Sound Archive. So uh, maybe in 2027, why not in the National Sound Archive of Prague? <laughs> You know, I, I, I will I'll just uh, do the reaction of the legal stuff and things. You know, of course, that I mentioned that I jump into this uh, topic because I'm just a follower of the people like my colleague Iva Horova here, uh, who was who was the person who in late 90s raised the flag. Hey, we need to take care of the audio documents or some documents, audio carriers under the National Library of the Czech Republic. Of course, that they were people from the Czech radio as, a, as one of the biggest arc, sound archive in the early of the 90s. And you can go into the past and find a lot of inspiration, tries, fails, blocks and everything. Um, the most important thing for me is that, um, and it was in 2015, uh, when we were thinking about, you know, okay, where in the law, in the st doc strategic documents, in the Ministry of Culture or state documents, like an implementation of the culture heritage in the Czech Republic. So we do the control F, find a sound, audio zero really in 2015 there were no word about preserving sound so it was a big uh, help by the people and 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 you know the the the, the vice like eva and the others that we pushed the Ministry of Culture strategy documents, and from that time, 2000, I think 16, it looks like a year or two years, that there is at least a word, <laughs> yeah. preserve sound. Yes, it's not on the same level like Pedro mentioned to, uh, you know, you can read, it's in Portugal, it's 2,565 pages. <laughs> No, I think only 200, 500 pages, yes, <laughs> but it's in Portuguese, only one page in English, like an annotation, yeah, that's right, but uh, to have something like that, of course, that it will, we will be stronger with this kind of document, but this document, as you can see, the differences came from the Ministry of Culture, so from the uh, authority, who wants to do something, but from our side, from the bottom, let's say, we did methodologies. We brought the YASA recommendations and the standards into the Czech Republic. Uh, of course, that we brought also the other stuff from the traveling around the world 
from a different culture, teaching institutions, and uni uni universities that we brought the ideas and transform into the Czech environment and create what we create. You, you yeah. saw what we create. So now the, the department, what we've got under the National Museum, so thank, thank God uh, for that, uh, we are pretty strong. And of course, that step by step, we will be maybe in the 2027, somewhere like the, um, at least the British Library, or I'll see like that with the, the stuff, what, what, uh, what they are doing. Of course, that they are the biggest um, um, and the fastest. But, uh, you know, we need to have a goals and vision somewhere that we want to be there. We want to be on the same level like them. So. Uh, let me, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> a couple of years ago, uh, in, uh, in, at Yaza, um, uh, th there is one of the major figures that follows up this process in Portugal. He, he was when one of the actors of this political fight since the 90s. Uh, he, I, I told him, uh, oh, finally, uh, we will have a sound archive in Portugal. Uh, and he, make, he made a joke, oh, you are 120 years after us. <laughs> uh, well, I could not resist. He, he is a funny guy, and in the, he can stand a joke. <laughs> so I, 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 I told him, okay, we, 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 we are not going into 120 years of your mistakes. So we are learning from those institutions, uh, and we are hoping to, 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 to work. One of the things that, for me, it's my first time in Prague, in lovely Prague, uh, and it was, you know, we, we talk quite often. <laughs> but you play with us a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, many times. <laughs> uh, and, but what, what I understood is that our strategies, I, I was not thinking about it until two, day, two days ago, three days ago, when I was at the, at the Narodny, um, is that our strategies were culturally based. We, I guess that we, we didn't intend, or it, it was not something that we thought of, but from the experience, I understood that eventually, using a strategy coming from, if you want, from the top, from the legal aspect, here in, in Prague would be more difficult to implement, but it's more successful to start from, okay, uh, some kind of a proof of concept kind of approach. Let's show them what we can do. In, in my country, if I do that, uh, the first question would be, okay, since you've done it as a proof of concept, you can run it like it is and be, uh, you know, at risk every five years, three years cycle because, okay, this year, you don't have money to digitize uh, Shilax. Uh, but maybe in two years' time, eventually. <laughs> uh, so our strategy was, okay, let's make this secure to guarantee as uh, an, uh, uh, an official entity to be responsible and to, 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 to cl close this gap that we have an archive for photos, we have an archive for documents, we have an archive for published books, we have uh, a museum that deals with the moving images, but sound was not actually taken care. Uh, and this, uh, you might know, if you don't have an institution, we, we, I guess that all of you come or from a company that provides the services or from an institution that is running for 100 years or 50 years. Uh, but there was a time where all of your institutions doesn't exist. Now imagine, picture yourself without an institution, your institution not existing. Imagine a 20th century without images, without sounds, completely mute, completely blind. That's what our countries are facing. Uh, so uh, I hope that in, in our case, we are seeing the end of the tunnel and there, there is a, a light that is not a train. It's, we are hoping that this will happen. Let's there, is, see. there is not a light, there is a sound. <laughs> there, of course, of course. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I've got a, I've got a note that I have to mention. Of course, that uh, and you you describe the right that. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. 
uh, that you described it right, that yes, we have to do the research and science, do the results and the outcomes, peer review articles, you know, functional samples, softwares, and all these stuff. We did. You know, so you can find our results. And one of the results is that uh, the colleagues wrote uh, a book. Of course, it's in the Czech language, but when that will be, uh, you know, like a feedback, oh, we want to read it in English. Oh, yeah, we can translate it. So they wrote a book about the history of never existing audio national sound archive. So like 120 years. Uh, and then paper and paper. I mean, on paper, it's pretty interesting, like to read about the decades. And uh, they they covered they covered almost like hundred years. Of course, there are the blank space or the you know the white space or missing space in uh, during the communist era. But it looks that we are still like rediscovering what already was discovered. So yes, we are not telling that nobody is taking care here. We are telling and trying to argue with the people as you argue or you will argue if you will not have the institution like a nationalist archive. So we're trying to argue with the state or with, uh, you know, I think it's only with the state that it's really important to have an authority which will deal with these things because you did 250 pages, you got a approval that from the top, you got the rights, you've got the goal, you've got the power, maybe you will have the money like to build. From our side, we did the one word in the <laughs> state <laughs> documents that preserve sound documents yes. is important. So it's there, of course, that we have to fight more than just argue for the uh, 250 pages of the strategy and the concept of a methodology center maybe just because it will be really hard to build something here you know, we have to find someone like bill gates or yes. <laughs> something like a melon foundation yes then we will build the question is is it possible or is it necessary like to have an institution on the green on the ground from the ground like to build somewhere so uh, these tricky questions yeah. uh, will give you a, a lot of different questions but also a lot of answers like yes no make sense make no sense but uh, we are very open to any kind of uh, collaboration, cooperation, and we hope that in future will be also an, like an inspiration, not only for the countries from a different yeah. continent, but also for the countries in Europe, because there are a lot of countries with no institution dealing with the stuff. Yeah. And, and there's also a cultural you know, element on the on, on this process because uh, you are asking for collaboration yeah. in between countries, in between continents, and sometimes it's hard to to articulate, to cooperate with the institution next door because we speak different languages. We cannot agree in the metadata schema. We cannot talk about the, the what is relevant or not. What can we do? What should we do? And you have 500 uh, wax cylinders, uh, but you are dealing with... I but don't you know. can talk through the wave format or Mark 21. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is another <laughs> another issue. Uh, this question. You can't of build. You can't build the project in for two weeks, three weeks, yeah, like yeah, Horizon yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so yeah. that's why we are trying to find yeah. also the contributors ar around the Europe because for us we can't be the leaders in the project like uh, yeah. say the Mellon Foundation or Horizon because you will need three more yeah. countries. Uh, yeah, let me tell you, the, uh, in my country, COVID was an essential agent in this process because of COVID and the economical crisis and the compensation in the European community gave to the countries the fa uh, infamous or famous uh, resilience, uh, recovery and resilience plan from the European community, we got the financial support for equipment uh, because in, in the first 
in the first program, the European community didn't allow uh, to, to, to use this money to build something. You can use it only in equipment. So we had a first financial support for equipment, but we don't have a place to put the equipment. On the second resilience plan, uh, the Minister of Culture at that time say, okay, this is the opportunity. Let's ask for the European community to put money f to build a building, <laughs> uh, an archive. And uh, uh, yeah, they accepted it. So <laughs> I guess uh, co we, were, we were like son sons or we will be sons <laughs> of uh, Bro COVID. Brother, brothers in arms. <laughs> brothers in arms. Okay, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, we don't want to, again, cut the lunch, so... Uh, yeah, and, and, and the idea is to have <laughs> not uh, a round table, but no. a square auditorium yeah. for you to put some questions. If someone wants talk. to jump into the conversation, we will be happy to just give them the microphone. Ivan, you don't want to jump. Oh. And there's also, like, two... two, two I would like only mention that uh, you have heard about two approaches. Uh, the ways are legal, both, but it seems that the Portugal way is more effective. And we are now in the quite new situation. I can, as a voluntary, to uh, devote all my energy and time to this matter, because I'm retired now. And uh, I would like to remark that it seems that it's above all the political will to solve this task. Oh, that's right. We've got the good uh, examples from Norway, from US. Like, find your senator. <laughs> Just a, a quick remark on this. The, 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 the process w have, have been discussed since the 90s. Since 1997, we are doing lobbying for this. But only in 2018, we got a breakthrough. We, we were seated informally at the end of the day, not in an official agenda of the Secretary of State of Science, and each month we, we met to decide what can we do about the lack of a National Sound Archive. Uh, and after a year, uh, she created a, a structure, a mission structure, we call it, or a team with a precise mission of creating the archive, and we are running since then in that legal figure. Uh, but a huge support from the Minister of Culture that uh, in the first meeting, one of his secretary told me, you will have 20 minutes to convince. Uh, and actually the 20 minutes turned into two hours because, you know, she was start asking things like, oh, how do, did they record it in wax cylinders? How do you read wax cylinders now? And what's the problem with tapes? Tapes is just tapes. Oh, speeds, uh, or, or organization of tracks. She, she started to be an advocate of the sound archive, putting questions, asking things, technical things, because, you know, it, I guess she, she got in some kind of a haha moment. Oh, what? <laughs> this is not just the cassette player, I press play and I hear the sound. Uh, so, there's another. Is there another question? Hello, thank you for your presentation and both your inputs. Uh, I'm quite curious what was uh, like the first kind of moment, first motivation to actually wanting uh, to establish a national sound archive. Like, 
uh, where do you get the motives and inspiration from? If you can a little bit elaborate on that. Thanks. And you are asking us as a like a person, like w where we found the motivation, or where was the motivation like a hundred years ago or whatever? So I understand your two individuals active in trying to establish something new. Uh, I'm probably asking more about your personal okay. motivation. Yep. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, you want to start or I can start? Um, mm. I think that it was uh, it was uh, it was in I think 2011, like when I when I was working uh, in the Municipal Library of Prague and then found that uh, there were tries in the past making or uh, trying to uh, build or establish a national some archive or a, a, a national phonotheque or a discotheque doesn't matter uh, how they call it. and um, you know it's a good question because like uh, you know this is I think that last 10 years it's like a mine my uh, how, how is it right in English Lo lifelong uh, goal to do this topic or do this problems or do this uh, idea like to uh, build, of course in quotes, uh, the National Sun Archive or at least have an institution which will deal with the, with the uh, sound um, uh, documents as a methodology center. So um, maybe I found a, a, a blank space on the map uh, of the sound documents in Europe or in the world that oh yeah this is missing why not to why not to go for that my, my reasons were quite practical uh, in my prayer history I was a researcher back then <laughs> uh, a, a team where I belong decided to write an encyclopedia because there was no encyclopedia for music in Portugal in the 20th century. So we decided to do the, the, the encyclopedia. And the first thing was that, okay, where can I find the recordings I'm talking about? And nobody, nobody had them. Nobody knew what the recordings were. So there is a huge lack of resources. So that was the, f the first. The second one, I was trained and as, a, as an anthropologist. Uh, bon, ethnomusicologist. Nah. Uh, so uh, I did my interviews. Where should I put them? Not in my place. My wife knows that if I, I will be killed in Prague when, after lunch, crossing the street, the car hits me. After schnitzel. After schnitzel. <laughs> uh, she knows how to, that she has to destroy that box full of cassettes because some of them are private conversations with musicians, with politicians, with, and I prefer not to give access to, because I cannot guarantee the security of those people. Some of them are dead, all of, most all of them are political, uh, um, public figures, so it, it's, it's problematic. So where can I put the, the tapes? No, careful, it's recorded, so now oh. the Portugal state will know that you are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that there's a box, a wooden box in my place. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was quite practical the reason. So uh, and afterwards, yeah, the, uh, I studied, you know, the the industry, uh, the technolo uh, technologies of music or sound, sound technologies uh, from an anthropological aspect, and of course this helps us to, you know, a uh, basic ground for us to ste step in. So yeah, these are, I guess two and a half reasons <laughs> we decided to advocate for a National Sound Archive. Great, any more questions? Yep. Thanks, Philip and Pedro. Um, I actually have two questions, and I think one's better for outside. Um, so you, you mentioned that you're learning lessons from other institutions that have made various mistakes over the decades. I'm curious to know what some of those big mistakes are so that we try not repeat those. And I think the other question is about progressing legal deposit 
for sound and audio because Australia doesn't have legal deposit for that either. Yeah, um, one of the major problems we, we faced is that entities or the oldest ones or the biggest ones tend to be, they are quite dynamic in the outreach because the, the, the ability to produce results is so huge. You can, you know, come out with a collection of wax cylinders that you find in the drawer and you have a full yearly program with stakeholders, communities and events and publishing a website and so on and so forth. So you, you have a huge team, you have huge resources. Uh, but at the end, since those institutions get this as set, taken for granted, uh, sometimes inside they tend to be solid, solidified entities. It's, they, they are quite dynamic on the outreach, but inside uh, the, the versatility to, to, to cope with hardships, specific prog problems, uh, like for instance, the, the metadata structures, most of the institutions we are talking with, they are talking as if computers were the ability for process data as uh, Spectrum 48, uh, in the 80s. Now my watch has more ability to, to process data than the computers that were designed for the metadata structures we are e still using. So how can we overcome this some kind of a latency? You know, I, I had someone that told me, oh, should we change the, the metadata scheme or, you know, translate the metadata scheme we are running it for 80 years, and for me it's bizarre. I, I, I cannot understand, really, uh, this notion of tradition, uh, or, or citified inside the institution. So I guess this is one of the things that I, I saw across the, the entities. Of course, there, there is minor mistakes or problems in workflows or, or uh, you know, the, the, the sound lines or the, how, how to connect equipment. And uh, I guess that, you know, we are not doing rocket science. Uh, we are not putting satellites on space. We are doing much easier work. Uh, so, yeah. As always, I've got 20 seconds. You gave me, you, you give me like only 20 seconds, so now I've got, I'm out of time. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, and, um, uh, really uh, short example well, um, you know you can you can uh, uh, build uh, or you can do this uh, this work uh, based on the projects you know you can uh, wait till the project the project is for me like a, some kind of like a, a booster you know so it will it will gives you a lot of good stuff I mean you know money um, um, knowledge or whatever travels um, um, uh, technologies but then you have to count that okay uh -huh. and what about after the five years what about after the project that happens to us because uh, who knows like the last five six years we had a project called new phonograph listening to the history of sound and it was based on the cylinders and 78s and uh, we finished we succeed they uh, confirmed that we did the results outcomes uh, wrote the final report and that's all what else so I'm uh, you know and you we are discussing the persistency <laughs> yeah <of the> <laughs> I know, uh, but um, uh, why, you know, Somaya asked about the legal deposit. We are lucky that in, here in the Czech Republic, the libraries, like a big library, has got a legal deposit for the sound. So that's good. You know, imagine that in Czech Republic, we've got a bigger network if you compare with the population than the whole world, I mean, than the US. We've got 5,500 libraries. That's ridiculous. It's better than the uh, phone boots in the 80s, like the network, you know. <laughs> uh, so the share the information is good for the sharing the information. So, but uh, what I'm, wh why I'm really like uh, happy and maybe like, uh, oh, 
we did it, that you received an email and someone, hey, I, I saw your website or I saw you somewhere online, some YouTube, video, TV, radio during the last six, five years. I've got a grandparents and they were, you know, with uh, the second president in the United States. We've got the, his recordings. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we are here. Oh, we want to donate you a 700, whatever. The biggest collection of the violin players in the world, 13,000 recordings by Kevork Marukian from Munich is based in the Czech Museum of Music because my vice man, Gabriel Gessel, the private collector, was a good guy, good friend with this person, and he said, hey, they are going, doing the good stuff. But what we must do is to sell the product, to sell that, as I did now, we've got this collection, come. Yeah, send me the digital files, send me the digital pictures, send me the metadata. Oh yeah, you have to wait, because we don't have a stuff. So this is the problem. Of course that I'm happy and maybe honored that they, they are writing us an emails. We would like to donate you something. But who will do the work after these projects? So this is something what must be solved everywhere. You need to have a support. Thank God to the National Museum we got the support after the project. It was a big, but we've got the support. But we need more for the team, not for the part-time jobs. So I think that we are done. <laughs> we have one more question. Yeah, so if we can keep the, keep the answer short, sure. and then we'll head off to lunch after. Yeah. Okay. So from Karel Bovesny, if this institution would be created, would you take over the careers from the other Czech institutions already having sound collections? Uh, biggest problem, you know, I think that this is a big problem. If you, if you imagine that, uh, you know, we've got 5,000 libraries, we've got 1,000 museums, we've got 120 archives and more castles and, 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 and these collections in the castles. The problem is what, what is once written or evidence in the system of the archive, it's very hard to get from. So this must be, uh, I think that must be in like a, some kind of like a contract between like, okay, yeah, you can deposit. You are not giving us that the whatever National Sound Archive owns the careers, but we've got the depositories right for the, uh, right for the careers so you can deposit these things. So this maybe uh, will works. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, okay, for you to keep this doc those documents, you, you have to maintain these conditions, okay? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so something like that can be, can be done, I mean, solve the problem. And another? Yeah, no, I think we're, we're good. We're going to wrap up yeah. and head to lunch. So thank you so much for that really thought-provoking discussion. Okay, thank you very much. For and thanks to Radoslav and Aida as well for their presentations. Um, so lunch should be outside and we're back in here at 2 p.m. for more.